Good morning, Richard Calhoun, real estate broker with Creekside Realty, working with buyers and sellers for 40 years here in Silicon Valley. We're here to, to talk about Silicon Valley real estate market. Then we'll expand out to the Bay Area and then come back to the three counties to make up Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley is Santa Clara County, San Mateo County, and Alameda County. This is days of unsold inventory, the purple line. That's, to me, the single biggest indicator. So you can see we're right now somewhere around 40 days of unsold inventory, which is actually pretty good. Normally, I consider anything between 40 and 80 to be a balanced market, anything below 40 to be a seller's marketplace. However, at this time of the year, the DUI is normally artificially low because of the holiday. And that's why I have the blue line up here. That's the worst 10% out of the last 10 years. So essentially the second worst year. And the red line is the best 10% or the second hottest year. And then black line is the median. So this is the black line is where you'd expect inventory to be at this time of the year based on the last 10 years. And as you can see, that number is probably somewhere around 32 two days of unsold inventory. We're probably somewhere right around 40 days of unsold inventory now, eight days slower. That is significant, but really not bad. So the speed of the real estate market is not very bad. And that's basically right now you have limited inventory because the end of the year holidays and you're looking at sales over the past five weeks, which are going back in time when there was more sales activity, which was what gives you an artificially low DUI. It was the same data going back to 2014. This is your offers accepted. Again, the purple line is your data line. The blue line is the worst year you'd expect to have. Your black line is your typical and your red line is the best. By the best, that would be the most offers because offers are a good thing. And the worst or coolest would be the least number of offers. So you can see the trend is very vertical now. So it's hard to see the separation, but the worst we've had in the past is here or the second worst. And for this time of the year, and now we're down here. So we're doing worse than you would really expect it to be. And it looks like the worst year at this time of the year was right back here in uh, 2020. And that's out of the last 10 years. Here's the data going back to 14 real quick. And you can go back and freeze frame for those that want to actually look at that data. Now we move on to the inventory. And inventory is third because the ratio between supply and demand is the most important, which is DUI. Then demand is more important in real estate than supply. You know, in economic economics that equal each have an equal impact, but the inventory tends to be relatively constant. Your demand fluctuates more, and that's why the demand is more important. Demand is also the people that are purchasing the property, the people that are putting in a commitment of a house. Looking at inventory, you can see inventory normally comes down. The least inventory we had, which would be the hottest years, is the red line. Again, the black line is where you'd expect the inventory to be, and the blue line is the most inventory we've had at this time of the year. And basically the inventory, so the selection that any particular buyer has, is exactly where you'd expect it to be. And again, that's for the three Bay Area counties so that I call Silicon Valley, Santa Clara, San Mateo, and Alameda County, single family homes only. Moving on back to 2014. So what we're talking about is the Greater Bay Area, which now consists of 13 counties. We've been talking about Santa Clara, San Mateo County, and Alameda County. We're only talking about single family homes. Another micro market area in the Greater Bay area, San Francisco, Marin, Sonoma, Napa, Solano, Contra Costa, which I call the North Bay, San Joaquin and Sacramento counties, which I call Central Valley, and Santa Cruz and Monterey. Within Silicon Valley, I have micro markets that are available offline. And in all 13 counties, I can customize it by city, zip code, and school district in Silicon Valley counties. This is looking at the inventory. And sorry, the top part is off the graph up here. I didn't catch that. I would have corrected that. So Silicon Valley inventory is here. Marin and San Francisco and Santa Cruz and Monterey down here. Small counties. North, North Bay and Central Valley up here being bigger and Silicon Valley sort of being in the middle. You can see all counties come down fairly dramatically at this time of the year, just plummeting off. That's just sellers don't want to be on the market over the end of the year holidays. And therefore, there's very little, little amount of inventory. You can see the upside down bump here, which is basically basically your available inventory here, but in 2020, right here by COVID, but you can see that you normally just have this upside down climb every year. So real estate is very cyclical. That is why I use a one week moving average. I use five weeks of moving
living average. I use 35 days in my month. I try to make adv take advantage of this cycle because otherwise, if you're fighting the cycle, you have to make corrections and there's no way to know what corrections to make every, any given month. I start on March 1st, go week increments from there. Then I ignore February 28th of every year and I ignore leap year when it occurs. Offer volume. So now you can see just going back to 14, here it is all on the scale. And that's something I advanced for me. So you can see the sine waves a little bit more. And here you can see the perturbation from COVID. Here's the days of unsold inventory. And again, Silicon Valley is the hottest marketplace at, down here. Then you have the blue, which is going to be the Central Valley. The green, I'm going to be Santa Cruz. The gray is going to be San Francisco Marin. And and so the yellow is North Bay. And again, this data here is going all the way back to 2014. Median days on market. This is left over. I will probably drop that off. I don't think it's a significant. I put this up when I didn't have days of unsold inventory, and that was just last week. I was able to come back with a reasonable way to calculate inventory. Once I was able to reasonably calculate inventory, I was able to reasonably calculate days of unsold inventory. And then here is what my real modification was, which was my estimate for DUI. Now, what's interesting is DUI is decreasing at this time of the year and days on market's increasing. Why that almost contradiction is occurring is days on sold inventory is being driven by the reduction of inventory coming on the market where DOM is getting increased because right now the inventory that's available has been on the market for a while. So you have to understand to some degrees what you're using to as your benchmarks and how they operate to know at what time of the year, which one is more important and more significant. The age of unsold inventory is always the more important and more significant, except at major holidays. Going into every major holiday, you can see it plummeting. And that would be for July the 4th, Labor Day, uh, Memorial Day, all those holidays. Sellers just don't want to come on the market the week of a holiday, basically the week before the holiday. So they're on the market for the work first weekend on that holiday weekend. And that impacts days of unsold inventories. And that's one reason I use five weeks is to try to get rid of that fluctuation. The end of the year holiday impact is too great to eliminate it by just going out five weeks. Here's the magnitude of overbidding. This gives you an idea of how much pressure the individual buyers are feeling. And again, you can see the different counties. The bold orange is Silicon Valley. San Francisco Marin is the gray line. So they're sensing the most overpressure. Then you have the yellow line, which is the North Bay. And then you have green line, which is Monterey, Santa Cruz coming in last place is the Central Valley on the blue line. It's probably noteworthy that basically three of these are getting below 100%. North Bay, Central Valley, and Santa Cruz Monterey are getting below their asking price on average. And believe it or not, Silicon Valley and San Francisco Marin are still getting slightly above their asking price. Here's the frequency of overbidding. This is how common overbidding is versus the magnitude. And frequency comes second because buyers will first drop from 110% of an overbid down to 101% of an overbid, but 101% is still an overbid. But you can see how much that's dropped off. We're down right around 30% for some of the slower counties. Again, the better counties are the Silicon Valley and San Francisco Marin, and they're still just slightly north of 40% of the sellers are getting more than their asking price. The prices are a lot lower, yes, but they're still getting, it's still a competitive marketplace out there. Here's prices going back in time. So you can see the current price here, and then I drew in what I hope is very close to a horizontal line. And you can see that where all the counties are basically at or before April of 2021. All the appreciation we had in the bulk of 2021 and 2022 has now disappeared. These people here would the people that purchased in this time would have negative equity in theory. People in this time frame would have negative equity. Everybody that purchased before about January 1st, 2021 would have positive appreciation. There's going to be a few exceptions like in San Francisco and Marin where you were above way back in 2020. Now you got to remember when you're following the median sold price, which is what all these data points are, that is not necessarily reflective of property values and 
and we'll see a good example of that, which is pretty uh, shocking later in the presentation. This is on a log scale. One of the things I like to point out is Santa Clara, Alameda, and San Mateo, the Silicon Valley, got closer to San Francisco Marin. And that would say that Santa Clara outperformed San Francisco and Marin recently. Central Valley also looks like it was catching up to Santa Cruz and Monterey. So again, that would tend to indicate that Central Valley improved. And I also, you know, just for the Central Valley, for San Joaquin portion at least, you have a lot of building going out in the mountain house area, which are more expensive homes. That's pulling up the median and not pulling up the property values for existing homes. And that's one way you can have a shift between property value and median pricing. Here's the appreciation on a percentage basis. What I did for this slide is I went back to 2015, April 1st of 2015 through March 31st of 2016. That I did every transaction that closed in that fiscal year, I calculated their median and they did an appreciation. What's interesting here is San Francisco has underperformed the other county areas, the other micro market areas, and the Central Valley is overperformed. Silicon Valley is sort of right there in the middle cluster. With that, we'll go over my what I call my root URL, which is in the green. You add in the year 2022, and that will be 2023 next year. For those that aren't watching every week, 2022 will continue to work, work but I'll add 2023 as well. The handout is posted, so if you use the root URL and put in the letter H for handout 2022-1224 for today's date, you'll get the 40-page uh, PDF of the slide presentation. You get any specific episode on YouTube by putting in the year, month, date code, and the green gets you there. Again, I'm Richard Calhoun, Creekside Realty, working with buyers and sellers in the Silicon Valley. I'm open for any questions that anybody might have before I proceed. And in the second half of the presentation, feel free to ask your questions as you go along. Not seeing any questions, I will proceed. Okay, now we're going to be talking about Silicon Valley data, single family homes, three counties only, Santa Clara County, Alameda County. County, San Mateo. We're going to be using five weeks as our reference period. We're going to be using up till now nine years, 2014 through 2022, starting basically on the first of the year, I will start using 2023 data and we'll actually have a 10-year moving average. Right now, I used nine years through 2022 and then back populated that nine-year number to have a comparison. So this is now looking at the three co counties that make up Silicon Valley and seeing how they perform compared to one another. This is simply looking at inventory. San Mateo County is the smallest county, so it has less inventory. The takeaways are Alameda County and Santa Clara County are roughly the same size. Their lines are on, roughly on top of one another. It's interesting in 2018, Santa Clara County really had a shortage of inventory versus everybody else. And that's when we had the second wave of appreciation, which is very unusual, was driven by this lack of supply, created no supply. And when you have demand, then you have people bid up the prices. But in general, and you know, that's an exception where Santa Clara County was impacted and the other counties weren't. Each county doesn't move together the same as the whole. Here's the number of offers accepted, very similar patterns. So Alameda County during that 2018 period had the same number of offers, but Santa Clara County was just super on fire because we had no inventory. You can see that we're going down. We're going down at this time of the year. If you come back, it's a little hard to do because you come down. So the valley tends to be around January 15th. And the reason for that is I'm going back five weeks. And if you go by, that's just about when you dropped off Thanksgiving. And that gives you sort of the low volume for the year. So this is still going to come down some more and into next year. Days on sold inventory, again, is the key. And this is just for Silicon Valley. I now have the three components so I can show you. So you're basically up here right above 40 days, maybe 41 days, it looks like, instead of, I think I was guessing, north of 40. Fastest we were at this time of the year was below 20. We're typically right around 30. And now we're around 41, 40. 
42. Here's your inventory. And I apologize that my scale's off on some of these graphs. So what we're missing is we're missing the North Bay and we're missing Central Valley, except here you can start seeing they're coming down. And it is noteworthy. They're coming down to the same level as Silicon Valley. And back in these other years, yes, it came down, but they weren't in the same order. There's actually a greater shortage of inventory in the Central Valley and the North Bay than there is in any of the other counties out of the 13 in the Bay Area. Just looking at days on the market, and I did this graph. And just to give you a little background too, is my desktop computer is crunching a macro that I expect to be done around a week from now. It started two days ago. It's about a 10-day macro, believe it or not, uninterrupted. And that will allow me to be quicker, consistent in my data. About two or three weeks ago, I don't know if you remembered, I was noticing an anomaly in the data that I didn't understand. I went back and chased it down, found out what the inter problem is, and it, there was a mapping problem between the MLSs that belong to the Northern California Alliances. And because of that, I decided to make the decision to just import the data into my own database. And I already had it imported. So I'm just integrating that database and calculating off my own database internal instead of relying on any MLS to provide me the data because no matter how you slice it, each one has their idiosyncrasies. And to give you an idea, the impact that I was, the last impact that I found is several of the single family homes that are inputted by a Central Valley MLS are misinterpreted to be a duet home. And therefore, if you search for single family homes, aren't included. Knowing that, I now in my integrated database have the duet homes as well as the detached and then go back to the source to find out if they're a duet home or a single family. There's a lot of corrections that are going into my database. My database will be internally consistent and more accurate than any of the MLSs from what I can tell having spent this kind of time in the data. And going forward, I'll be consistent. I don't think I'll have it done by next week, but probably the first week in the new year. Now we're going to go looking at a little different slide. The purple line is always the current data. The current data here is 2020. And then we go to a plus one week on this, which is data up through 2024. This is the hottest marketplace we ever had, which was March 29th of this year. And this is for single family homes in Silicon Valley. So it's Santa Clara County, San Mateo County, and Alameda County. This is the worst line we ever had, which was November 30th of 2001. And what we're going to do is add in one new week each slide, and I'll make the new week the boldest. You jumped up here. The reason I have the red up arrow is for a hot marketplace. The blue down arrow is for a cooling marketplace. When they're both on there is a plateau. The next data line will be just about the same point as the dotted line, which was a year ago. So here we go. There you, you can see how you're almost on top. Now you've improved. So that's why the red arrow improved again. So the red arrow basically no change. So we brought in the blue, came down. So we got rid of the red arrow and now we're coming down. And this was just earlier this year. It was basically July 19th and a couple weeks, months earlier than that. Now, August 23rd. Now we're about ready to start plateauing again. See right on top of one another. And now you can start seeing and the reason I bolded the line so you can see where it's adding. So now you can see that the data is being added, but it's right on top of the other data right on top, you know, might say that was a slight improvement, right on top. And pretty soon we're going to start noticing a slight decrease because you can see the purple lines down here, but it's pretty subtle when it happens. So a slight improvement. Now that was a detriment. That's a detriment. Detriment. Way detriment. That's the worst week we've had right there. And that's the current week, which always makes me a little suspicious because the current week data, yes, it's going back five weeks. So you have 35 days of data, but there's a lot of data from yesterday that I've incorporated, but there's a lot of data from yesterday that won't get reported until Monday or Tuesday, and there's no way to incorporate data that's not reported yet. Now we're looking at median sold price for the three counties. You can see they follow a very similar trend. You can see Santa Clara County pulled up and then got closer to San Mateo County and pulled away from Alameda County a little bit, not dramatically, but slightly. Here's the going back to 2014. 
Here's the appreciation going all the way back to 2014. So you can see that we had a, quite a bit of appreciation run up in 2022 that disappeared. Here's January 1st of 2022, a rapid appreciation followed by a rapid depreciation. And then if you come back, you can see that the we're about 160% of the value we were over this entire fiscal year, which again was April 1st of 2015 through March 31st of 2016. Here's the number of offers. I'm following this and I will work on this. Look how low we are the, right now. We only had 328 offers accepted in the last five weeks. The previous low was 408. So this is a record low. The big takeaway is you've been basically the 24th or the 25th slowest year out of 25 for quite a while now. And then just earlier this year, we were the hottest or the second hottest. And the change between the two was pretty rapid. Here's some raw numbers for those that would like to look at it. The number of new listings this week is way down across the board. The number of active listings. The reason I crossed out this inventory, I don't believe my numbers for last week. I didn't have time to go back and investigate. There was a huge drop off. I suspect I did something incorrect and calculated my inventory incorrectly. It's a pretty simple calculation, but based on the numbers two weeks ago and current week, I don't trust my numbers from last week, so I'm putting them up there, but crossing the line out. Numbers of offers accepted basically across the board, 10% more or less down. DUI is improving, but it's improving because the drop in inventory is much, you know, basically north of 50 well, basically 60% and the drop in offers is only 10%. So that's an improvement in the ratio between the two. Jump down to the bottom here on the appreciation I was commenting earlier. How can you have a 23% appreciation for the combined counties when the biggest appreciation of each individual component is only 10%? Basically, if you're selling more expensive homes because you're selling more in Santa Clara County and San Mateo County, that's going to pull up your median. Your median for the three counties is only 1.1 million. So you can be selling below the median in Santa Clara County and still be pulling up your median for the three county combined. What it really says is, you know, not that Alameda County is bigger, but the, the distribution is a little skewed. And so you're having a huge increase. And this is the reason I look at in smaller micro market areas. And, you know, the media always reports on Bay Area real estate, which makes up the nine counties. If you look at just three of the counties, you're going to be reporting a 23% price increase over over 2020 price. This is not converted to that fiscal year, and I probably will convert it. But your individual counties, which are more reflective of property values, only are up 4% in San Mateo County, and the highest they're up is 10% in Alameda County. You got to understand what you're looking at and the impact of it. Going back up and looking at the inventory, we sold 1,400 homes, average days on the market, median days on the market, sale price, list price frequency. So basically a third of the sellers are getting more than their asking price. They're on average getting right about their asking price a little bit below in Santa Clara County. And Santa Clara County is doing the worst out of the three counties right now on the magnitude of overbidding. The sale price range up here, 10 percentile, the cheapest 10 percent in each area. So you can see that Alameda County is less expensive. You can't even be selling homes in San Mateo County and be pulling up the or pulling down the median because you don't have any homes really below 1.1 million. Yes, there are 10% of the homes selling below 1.1 million, but that's a pretty small percentage. Nine, nine out of 10 homes sell above the median for the three county area. So if San Mateo County sells a few more homes than it proportionally normally does, that pulls up your median. And then you have the upper 10 percentile so you can see what that is. We already talked about the appreciation. Now we're going to look at the micro market areas within Santa Clara, within Silicon Valley. I have not added Alameda County. I hope to be doing that shortly. You'll see Alameda County colors up here when they're available. But this shot, this graph is probably surprising and a lot of people will question my data when they see it. Basically, it's saying that we're in a hot marketplace. Well, this is based on the speed of the marketplace. So the speed of the home that are selling is quick. It's the fact that we're just not selling any homes or the homes that the sellers are asking too much money for are not going to sell in this kind of marketplace. But 
Today's unsold inventory is based on the number of offers, and it only it's the people that are selling that are getting impacted. Now, the overbid magnitude, people are going to say this makes a little bit more sense. This shows the bluer the color, the less below the asking price the seller gets. And you might remember that the bay, the coast, the Half Moon Bay area was really blue, but I pointed out before that it was basically based on very few homes. So it went from very blue to one of the hottest marketplaces in just one week. And that's just a matter of a couple homes because I think there was only three last week and I think there's five sales this week. It's just very low inventory. And that's one of the reasons I don't break down even smaller micro market areas is you get statistically insignificant. Two areas that I think are already questionable on their statistical significance are the San Mateo County Coast and the Foster City Redwood Shores area. They're just too small, but they also don't have any things similar that I could group them with and I didn't want to drop them out like some of my other areas like Santa Cruz Mountains that I just don't track because there's just not enough inventory to be statistically significant. Here's the frequency of overbidding and again this shows that you know buyers just aren't overbidding in South County only 14%, Saratoga Las Gatas only 12%, the expensive areas in San Mateo County only 13%. It basically shows that even in a slow marketplace, you can get overbidding, but that number gets down and it, it doesn't get much below the numbers of 12% and 14%, which is one of the reasons I went saturated blue at 15% because there's a certain number of properties that get underpriced intentionally. There's some that get at underpriced un, unintentionally. And there's also a buyer that wants a particular property that isn't willing to risk it. That's going to overbid no matter what the price is but being asked almost. Here's the sold price range. You have the cheapest 10 percentile on the left, the median in the middle, and the most expensive 90 percentile on the right in each of the different micro market areas. Here the color is basically where you are on price ring, not where you are on the condition of the market marketplace. So the redder the color, the more above the median the price it is. The bluer the color, the more below. And typically, Redwood City is the median price at two point, well, whatever its number is, and its median is 2.25. You can see Redwood Shores came in just above. Base Cities is underperforming Sam, uh, Redwood City, which is pretty unusual. It, it did that last week. It's doing that this week. I'm not sure what week it actually started to do that. That means cities like Burlingame, San Mateo, San Carlos, you know, basically the cities that are on the bay in San Mateo County are selling at a lower median and lower upper price than Redwood City. Now the low end, the bay cities are more expensive. So it's just a little weird. And Redwood City has been really going up in value recently. And I don't have that by itself. Oh, I don't didn't post the data here. I feel sworn I did. Well, this is showing you not as of last week. This is showing days of unsold inventory in the different micro market areas. You can see that I've added in Alameda County down at the bottom. I will probably change the order of that for my convenience. They're on there, but I don't have any coloring. Here's the conditions that you'll experience in the different micro market areas within Silicon Valley, again, Alameda County to be added. So your DUI would tend to indicate we're in a hot marketplace. But again, I've already said it several times, that's because of the holiday impact. You can see based on magnitude of overbidding, we're in a cool marketplace. Yes, this is historical data going back five weeks where the days of unsold inventory is not. And when I say going back five weeks, it's using five weeks of data, but it starts five weeks ago. That's when the offers were negotiated and that's when you set your price. So it's really data from from six to 10 weeks ago, along with the frequency and along with the sold price, where DUI is only from zero weeks ago to five weeks ago. Here's some raw numbers. I, for some reason, dropped out Alameda County and I'll try to bring it back in, but you can see Santa Clara County actually has a shortage of inventory compared to where you'd expect it to be. San Mateo County has a little bit of a surplus. Days of unsold inventory you can see is 39 and 36, so definitely below 40 in those counties. Alameda County is at 
42, which is why that average was just above 40 when you did the three counties together. And I probably should add in Silicon Valley and the three components. You can see Alameda County continues to do the best on overbidding, which is almost surprising, and I'm not sure I understand why. But, you know, the buyers, that's one of the things that I look at when you look at the market this way, is you're saying that the sum of the buyers and the sum of the sellers are far smarter than in the analysts, and that's definitely true in this case. The buyers are willing to pay 2 and 3% above the asking price in Alameda County, where in San Mateo County, they're below by 1%, and they're below by a percent and a half in Santa Clara County. And the frequency of overbidding, again, Alameda County is the best, followed by San Mateo, followed by Santa Clara. Santa Clara is blue because I've defined somewhat artificially, but I believe it's somewhat reflective. Anything below 33% is a cool marketplace. And appreciation is a huge takeaway. Here's the numbers where we were earlier this year. And here's where we are now. So you were up at 43%. Values were 143% of their price in 2020. And now they're only 109%. You can't just say that you've lost, you know, 33% uh, because you've your loss is going to be based on the higher numbers. So you've lost somewhere around 25 to 30%. I didn't do the numbers real quickly. But San Mateo County here is actually lower than it was in 2021 by 1.5%. Alameda County went up to 51% and is now down to 10.5%. Okay, so here we're not com quite comparing apples and apples. What we're looking at is December data, but December data is not available until January the 5th. So what I'm doing is data through last night at midnight. You can see average days on the market, the median days on market, the inventory. Inventory is going to continue to drop. So nothing really in the active listings is uh, significant. We come down to the offers accepted. Median days on market, 30 average days on market 35, median days on the market 21, days of unsold inventory 39, nothing really jumping out, sales per day 12.9, not even jumping out because we're in 19 we were at only at 11.7. This will continue to drop. Coming down here, overbidding 98.7. That's going to be the lowest that we had until you get back here to 12 and frequency overbidding 31%. Again, that's going to be the lowest number until you get back here to 12. The, over, the median price, you can see we're down from last year. And the number of closings, 533, that is going to be the lowest number. The previous lower was 566. This number will continue to go down. Basically, it's the lack transactions. It's a big story right now. And this is comparing apples and apples but it's going back in the rearview mirror because it's only November data. You can compare that offline. And those two, well, the first slide, the December data is going to be different than the handout. And we're back to my summary. And I'll see if anyone's got any questions. Anyone can reach out to me, Richard Calhoun, real estate broker with Creekside Realty, working with buyers and sellers since 81. Happy to work with most people. Reach out to me and reach out to me if you have any questions about statistics. And we'll see if anyone in the meeting has a question. Not seeing any questions, I'll end the meeting. Have a great week. Bye for now.